Hey there, and welcome to this video. So we're going to be going through um, and addressing uh, deuterium depletion in water. And also, just before, as a preface, before we do go into the video and the actual agenda of what's going to be involved, um, I am offering consultations, water consultations. So if you want to book in to potentially get machinery that can produce this form of water, with um, has all the benefits alongside it, uh, you can book that in. And then we can have a chat about that. I have a presentation ready and you can ask me any questions that you may have. So uh, looking forward to those of you who will be doing that. So it's going to be a, a sh somewhat of a shorter uh, video. So there's just three questions we want to address, or three points rather. Um, but yeah, questions. So is Kangen water deuterium depleted? What is deuterium depleted water? And what are its effects? So these are the things we're going to address, and let's get to it now. All right, so first question. So is Kangen water deuterium depleted? The short answer to that is yes. So the answer is elaborated on this book on the left, uh, Radiochemistry and Nuclear Chemistry, which was written by both by three professors, Gregory Chopin, uh, Jan Olaf Gustav Louis Jensen, Lil Jensen, <laughs> Lil Jensen uh, and Professor Jan Rydberg. On page 33, uh, 2.83 on electrolysis, um, this chapter is on isotope separation, it talks about how the electrolysis of water produces hydrogen gas at the cathode, uh, which contains a lower proportion of deuterium than the original water, and then it goes on. Um, but that's the main takeaway from, from uh, this part in respect to answering and addressing this question and whether candid water is deuterium depleted. Uh, Kangen water does have its own electrolysis process in order for Kangen water to be created. Um, it has to undergo electrolysis and ionization. So that addresses the question as to whether Kangen water is deuterium depleted. Uh, it is. And uh, furthermore, again, addressing Kangen water being deuterium depleted, this is also addressed in the mathematical model of Kangen water by physical and biochemical effects of cathode light. Uh, written by Professor Ignator, Professor Mosin, and Professor Kiro. On page one, it says, the decreased content of deuterium in studied water samples renders beneficial effects of these types of water on human health. Also, our research has confirmed the efficiency of water electrical treatment with Kangen water ionizer. So, essentially, Kangen water ionizers also do separate uh, deuterium, and thus, Kangen water is deuterium depleted. Okay, now, so this next uh, segment, we're addressing the question, what is deuterium, <coughs> excuse me, what is deuterium depleted water? So this is from a book by Dr. Thomas Cohen, which is forwarded by uh, Zach Bush. They're both um, medicine doctors. Uh, Dr. Thomas Cohen was formerly an ER doctor. Um, he's a naturopathically accredited and I believe Zach uh, Bush, well, he's MD, he's an MD medicine doctor. And, um, yeah, he's also has other accreditations as well. Um, but nonetheless, we're going to be reading from this, the material in the book, Cancer and the New Biology of Water. And it reads, during the late 1930s, and this is, addre this is addressing uh, de what deuterium depletion, uh, depleted water is. So during the late 1930s and into the years of the Second World War, there was an intense interest in developing nuclear weapons and nuclear energy technologies. As an extension of our developing understanding of quantum and nuclear physics, one of the early re repercussions of these early nuclear experiments was the discovery of the existence of the various isotopes of hydrogen. Each element of the periodic table is defined by the number of protons it contains. The nucleus of each atom consists of positively charged protons and neutrons that have no charge. Both the protons and the neutrons have equal weight, and the weight is defined as one atomic unit. Swirling around this nucleus consisting of protons and neutrons are negatively charged electrons. 
Imagine planets revolving around the sun, and that is the current conception of electrons circling around the nucleus. Each atom in its resting state has a neutral charge, meaning the number of positively charged protons is equal to the number of negatively charged electrons. For example, hydrogen, the simplest and lightest atom, has one proton and one electron. Therefore, it, is a, it has a neutral charge, as do all atoms, and its atomic number is one. Atomic number is the sum of the protons, one, and neutrons, zero. An isotope can be considered a variation on the theme of the atom. This means that in order to still be in the family of the original atom, it must have the same number of protons as the original atom, but the number of neutrons can change. Deuterium is one of the two known isotopes of hydrogen. There's actually more, but um, you'll be able to see that on Wikipedia if you want to do so. So deuterium has uh, one proton, so it is still hydrogen, and it has one electron, so it is still electrically neutral, but it has one neutron instead of hydrogen's none. Its atomic number is therefore two. That is, one proton plus one neutron equals two. Because deuterium is, in most respects, the same as hydrogen, it can form reactions in the same way, or at least in close to the same way, as hydrogen does. For our purposes, the most important reaction deuterium participates in is the formation of water. Regular water is H2O, meaning it is the chemical bonding of two atoms of hydrogen with one atom of oxygen. Deuterium can also react in much the same way as hydrogen, but instead forms D2O. In the 1930s, when deuterium was first identified and recognized for its capacity to, capacity to replace hydrogen in the formation of water, it was immediately clear that deuterium, so-called heavy water, is a naturally occurring substance. Large quantities of pure heavy water can be produced in various nuclear reactions. It is also called, quote, heavy because each deuterium is twice as heavy as hydrogen. Therefore, D2O is heavier than H2O. And while its biological role, if any, is still largely, largely to be worked out, it was also pretty clear quickly that in high doses, it is toxic to virtually all life forms. <clears throat> if you water plants with it or attempt to germinate seeds or feed animals, they will fail to grow and soon will die. Pure heavy water is a strong biological poison. It was then discovered that most naturally occurring non-salt waters on Earth contain a small amount of naturally occurring DTO. In other words, if you test the DTO level of your local municipal water supply, the local stream or freshwater lake, it will typically test out to be about 150 parts per million ppm, a, rel a relatively smaller fraction. To picture this, if you imagine a litre of water, approximately one drop of water is DTO rather than HGO. It should come as no surprise <clears throat> that our bodily, bodily fluids also contain DTO at about the same level of 100 ppm. DTO, however, has many different physical properties that does, then does H2O. Chemically, it is a different molecule. For example, the freezing point of H2O is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, 0 degrees Celsius. The freezing point of DTO is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, 4 degrees Celsius. DTO has a, has a different density, the bond angles are different, and the different and the maximum spectrum of light absorption is different. All in all, as we should expect, it is a different molecule with different biological and physical characteristics. The question is, is that relevant to our health? We, we will address that question in the following uh, slide, which is going to be covering a different book by a different uh, doctor. But they do address it in this book. I do recommend grabbing this book, Cancer and the New Biology of Water Scrapbook. Um, but now we're going to address that water. Is this relevant to our health, deuterium depletion of water? Okay. So what are its effects? That is the effects of deuterium depleted water. And this is from a book called Defeating Cancer, The Biological Effect of Deuterium Depletion by Dr. Gabor Samja. And this is in this is in regard to deuterium depleted water. So he says, 
Its significance in tumor therapy is that experiments revealed that by deuterium depletion, the metabolism of tumor cells, i.e. their regulating system, can be disturbed, which results in the destruction of tumor cells. Now, this is from Dr. Gabor Samyo. His website is uh, as on the screen and will be in the link in the description uh, for further investigation. Highly recommend grabbing this book. Great book. He also released a new book uh, in 2022, um, Determined Depletion, A New Way in Curing Cancer and Preserving Health. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in potentially getting yourself some deuterium depleted water, I have a machine um, that I'm a distributor for that treats the water and depletes it of deuterium. Uh, so the link's in the description below if you want to message me on Instagram or book in a consultation.